I want to drive home for anyone that interacts with Ojiswi is animals have a role in our ecosystem. And I think very, very early in this conversation, you, you sort of um, talked about going into a culture and prescribing to the culture what they should be doing. And that that is, um, that's just ridiculous. Um, I think even, even growing up in India, um, there is a lot of nuance to what Indian food is. There is cultural implications to the food you are eating in India. Um, meat included, <clears throat> and, and there is a sort of fundamentalism. I think that's that's um, driven by specific religions, even today in India, that says, oh, meat, like you never eat a cow. But that's not always been true. Of, there's so much nuance hmm. when it comes to food is where I'm going with that. Um, I'm not, despite the fact that we work at Ojiswi with grains, with legumes, with um, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free products at the moment and farmers who grow uh, what are called commodity crops in the US. Um, I would hate for for Ojiswi to be thought of as staunchly against animal agriculture because that's not it. Like I think um, nuance is the essence of, of all climate discussions. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not someone that personally believes that animals should be removed from our food production ecosystem. It's, it's, that seems equally as absurd as saying, eat only meat for your diet. Right. Um, there is a level of balance. There is a level of um, understanding what about, sure, KFOs are terrible right now. Um, concentrated animal feedlots and uh, uh, concentrated on. animals. What is, what is, K, what is K4? Concentrated Animal Feed Feeding Operations, C-A-F-O, CAFO. Okay. Um, a ton of the emissions from animal agriculture right now, one is quantity, sure, but the other is treating uh, it, the way in which animals are processed as food. And we grow here in the U.S. Uh, a lot of our uh, corn, wheat and soy are repurposed to create animal food and then animals are then taken to these concentrated feeding operations which have a, which have tons of problems including disease packing animals into inhumane conditions all of everything that we think about when we say oh animals animals as food are bad for you right like it it comes from the way in which animals are being raised and processed as food it the animal itself, like a cow, I have no, pardon the pun, I have no beef for the cow. Um, it's doing what it's meant to be. Ruminants are important to the health of a land. When you think about um, what does it mean to, what did indigenous populations, how did they tend to the land? That is, so many of those principles are re-emerging as regenerative agriculture and regenerative ranching right now. Herds of bison that were moving from place to place versus, you know, endlessly grazing on land. That's informing so much of um, ranch and animal management at the moment for regenerative farmers and ranchers. Um, all this to say, Oh, just we is focused on vegan, vegetarian, gluten free, but that's because we are part of a system. I'm not looking to replace an entire diet. I'm not. Um, and I would go so far as to say, I don't think there is a diet that works for every single person on this planet. Um, I think we see it in our own houses, in our own families. Um, my diet's different than my spouse's diet. My diet is different from my closest friends' diets, and that's fine. Um, I think we need a little bit of everything, the same hmm. way that I think we need a little bit of everyone playing a certain role. Um, we all don't need to go back to the land and be farmers, because then that's right. not a system. It's just a bunch of farmers. Um, but we do need systems that help farmers who are making the effort to grow our food in a in a sustainable, ethical, environmentally friendly way, we need to find systems that that are that create markets for them. You can have demand, you can have supply, but you also need a market to connect the demand and supply. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, where I see businesses like uh, businesses playing a role, or, or organizations playing a role, or 
even the, the vegan bar that you were creating, it speaks to a specific demand and it hopefully speaks to a specific uh, su set of practices that you were sourcing from or farmers that you're sourcing from, but you were creating the vehicle that takes the stuff that is being created to the people that want it. Because if you threw right. a bag of millets at someone right now, they'd probably be like, uh, what do I do with this bag of millets here? Right. And then there's well, a first I would ask, education. what is a millet? That would be my first question. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Totally fair. And it's 